my dear dark ones welcome to my channel uh this is a um, video from my second channel i'm not going to be doing any readings on this channel because i wanted to be for behind the scenes and future in the future i will be sharing with you my travels and uh, where i go where i do my practices i might even show my rituals and a lot of the things that i know but i never share because usually <laughs> i think that everyone knows these things but you have so many questions that made me realize that a lot of you are starting witches so i will help you and share more on my channel today i dedicated this video to your questions because i posted uh, a post on community on my main channel in a witch and i ask you guys what kind of questions do you have for me so today i will go through some of your questions um whatever time you'll have and also one of the questions was uh, for you to share with you my tarot collection so i will be showing you my tarot decks that will probably help you to buy the same decks online and also answer your questions and talk a little bit about myself and the occult um you probably know that i have classical decks uh, rider white toth tarot and the french the tarot of marcel those ones i'm not gonna show because the majority of you have them also the hermetic deck the black and white uh, those four decks are probably the most popular ones i do believe that everyone who are into tarot should have them this is the most classical collection those tarot they open some kind of gates you know in your soul they connect us to your higher self the, the both the best the most and especially if you're in the beginning those are a few decks that there's so much information on them so it's very easy to learn and i do feel it's like it's an account tool and it's own on your altar so even if you don't use them but you have them it's, it elevates the power of your altar on just subconscious level because so many practitioners use them and have them and they created by the most famous figures of the occult of the past century so definitely those are the decks that I, I do recommend to have this deck is the one that i get so many questions in regards of where did i get it from i got it as a gift in paris actually not even in paris but in france uh it's a deck that is created by designer uh, by artist but i think spanish artist i don't remember her name i don't remember the name of the deck but um if you can find it if someone can find it and tell us the name of the deck actually i will be so grateful the deck itself honestly it's like an art because it's created by an artist and her knowledge of the occult of classical art is just i think exceptional every card is so beautiful it's just i don't know for me it's even more like decoration than tarot uh it's an oracle deck it answers questions uh it's beyond beautiful it's good in photos as well um if you're a practitioner this deck probably helps you as a visual tool to attract more people i will show you a few cards from this deck because they actually so interesting even if you look at this right creation and there is a keyhole and the heart is like this imagery invokes something in you like when i look at this card there is so many things that come in right away to my head to tell during the reading so this is really interesting deck if you're actually trying to do intuitive readings because the more intricate the art is the easier it is for us to say something right even for example if you have a question and this is actually one of the questions i've been asked how to um learn and read tarot intuitively just by looking at the tarot card right so for example if you have a question how does my soulmate look like and when you're looking at this card you definitely can say right away unusual looking you know <laughs> pink hair definitely tells that they change the hair color a lot a lot of tattoos you know unusual dressing so maybe they into gothic into witchy outfits you know so it's so easy to read cards when they are like that this one definitely comes the inspiration from ancient greece when europe was abducted and delivered to zeus right so this is another deck this one in russian um 
my mom gives me these decks as a gift when she meets me twice a year and um you probably don't know but i do speak russian this is uh if you know the work so hp lovecraft the necronomicron so this deck is based on his works i will open it i i use it not so often uh, probably because i'm not a fan of hp lovecraft i do like that he was the inspiration for so many occultists but as a deck itself i don't feel like it resonates with me much but my mom keeps getting it for me <laughs> even if i give it to someone as a present she still brings back even though she doesn't know but um she always have this crazy intuition so she always gives it back to me so i guess i still have it no matter what it's an interesting deck actually especially if you are fan of uh, all his books or if you're into something unusual this deck is definitely interesting so this is the Eurofund. as you see it's very dark it's very dramatic it's exceptionally unusual deck and if you work with dark magic um this is something very expert very very i would say inspiring your dark side it's provoking you to go deeper into your dark side right so even if you didn't read his books this is still very interesting tarot one of the questions that i was asked a few times in my community section was if i have any mentors in 3d or 5d this is the imprints by the way if you see the imprints card usually very positive and this deck is like it's scary and witchy right uh, mentors in a normal sense of way probably the way you assume um when you were asking the question i don't have any mentors this is high priestess by the way um i do feel that when you choose magic it's very important to stay true to yourself because we are so different and uh, by following somebody else's path we might forget our own um, you can get this is the magician you can get inspired by other people other practitioners like for example when the first time you saw me doing candle wax and you felt like this uh, excitement that you wanted to try it so in this case scenario maybe you can say that i'm your uh, mentor right but i do not believe that we actually need mentors when it comes to practicing a cult we just need to improve our own abilities because if you are into a cult if you're even watching um videos or movies about supernatural you do have some kind of abilities this is the fool and for you it's very important to develop them on your own with help of many people or many books of many different practices but not from one person that's my belief and uh, in a way maybe i would say at some point of my life Seth Alchemist was my mentor because he was the one who was teaching me sacred geometry and sigils. And I actually want to say this is not a tarot card itself. But always when I open a tarot deck, the new one, I always keep one card. You know, every deck has this empty card that just represents the deck itself. I always keep it as a way that if it comes in my readings, it always means that you don't have to hear anything. It's like you're on the right path. No messages, right? So I do recommend for you to add this extra card to become the 79th card. It's very interesting because sometimes as a practitioner, as a practitioner you have to pull yourself away and do not say anything because if you guide someone where they're not supposed to go they're gonna waste time so for me it's very important uh, by receiving this deck and reading this card in a reading i always say you don't have to know anything in regards to this question that you ask and uh, sometimes we just we don't have to say anything you know because maybe the question is wrong or maybe the person is not really uh, ready to hear something so I always keep one card like that. Uh, my biggest mentors, teachers, actually my teachers in the cult, you're probably not going to believe it, but my teachers are my clients. Every person that I've read for of done a ritual or did something, they taught me more than any book, any um, mage, any witch online or in person. And 
I don't know how it is about you, but every client that asks you a question or every student that you have, they're going to challenge you way more than any book that you can read or buy. So for me, it was probably my best decision to actually do not read many books. I've read the ones that I really felt like very drawn to and to start practicing like the moment I was ready. It's actually never there is a moment that you feel that you're ready to start doing tarot for others. But I put for myself when I was uh, learning tarot, it took me three months to learn tarot. But then I understood the more I learned, the more I forget. So for me, it was that I will start reading for people for free or for donation, right? And for me, it was first 50 free readings. And after that, I will start asking for donations in order to become a pre uh, tarot reader. But it took me, because maybe I was a little bit of a coward or I was questioning myself uh, to the point that it made me to read for free for 100 people. Before I said to myself, that's it, this is enough. Now I'm going to ask for donations. My first donation, my first pay for tarot, I think was a banana. And then it was... Uh, coffee, cup of coffee, uh, like $2, maybe sometimes I would ask just people for whatever it is you have on you, right? Especially when I ask people to read for them and then I have, then I, I always need to ask something in return to, to stay true to my promise to myself. So sometimes I would even get, I don't know, something that they have in a pocket. Doesn't matter what it is, like maybe a chocolate or uh, coin that it's only one cent or something like that doesn't doesn't matter it's just as long as i get something in return i will be happy so my mentors are my clients i'm so grateful to have them all even the ones who i had the bad clients as well we always have this blacklist for people we're not gonna read those people also taught me a lot of interesting lessons uh, how to position myself how to charge um, you know, store policies, my readings policies, how to tolerate people like that. There are people who are gifted and people who are crazy, and it's a very thin line between those two. There are dangerous people, and the line between what you keep to yourself and what you, like, have to tell, you know, it's just probably all of these things, they come with realizations when you actually start getting clients. So... The books that I've read, they gave me a lot of things to think about, but they never actually, you know, gave me an idea what it is actually to be a practitioner, which a reader. So my clients are my, <laughs> are my guides, my mentors, my teachers, my everything. And the more I get them, the more unusual they become, because probably as I grow, uh, people around me grow, I get more interesting questions, unusual cases, crazy cases, because I also need to learn. Um, another <laughs> Russian tarot. Uh, for those of you who speak Russian, this is very interesting. They probably do exist in English as well. And This deck is super unusual because it's cards that are based on Slavic mythology and uh, fairy tales and folklore. So it's it's even amazing if you want to learn Slavic magic. And they look like this. This is the pack. And the cards are also amazing because they're also dark. Those are oracle cards. They have numbers that are different to tarot. They don't have major arcana or anything like that, but they so unusual. So this, for example, this is the card that says you're tired, right? So someone needs to carry you. And it's so unusual, fairy tale like this is fierce when you're scared. Uh, a lot of you guys asked me, this is interesting, the darkness. You ask me how did I realize that I have spiritual gifts? I don't think I realized that because 
all my life I was fascinated by the supernatural and witchy things, but I was very religious. I was um, growing up with my grandma the first few years of my life, and she was an extremely religious person, but she also um, had a lot of influence on me. She was an unusual person, and she had so much influence that at some point in my life I was seriously thinking about becoming a nun until the moment I actually went to a nunnery and I saw what it is like, and then I decided no. But still I was religious until probably I started practicing on a serious level. And, um, you know, it's probably the hardest thing is for us, for practitioners, to actually believe that we are special, believe that we can do this, you know, and admit it to ourselves even more than to our family. When I realized that I supposed to do that, I didn't tell my mom for many years. I didn't tell my grandma, I think, she died without not knowing what I do for a living. And only after that, after a few years, I told my mom, and <laughs> her first question was, you don't even have like any good jobs in your country where you live. There is no jobs for you. Is that the only way for you to your money? It's like you fell so low, you know? <laughs> and even though she does, um, she does coffee readings herself now, she actually taught me how to do that. Uh, she was so religious and so probably normal so it is crazy that I, that I do this in my family. I'm the only one. And, you know, I do believe this moment. I've, built, I've been told a few times that I'm a witch, and I always did some crazy things that for me was normal. For example, when I was 12, I started reading palms. And for me, it was so normal. I didn't think that it's because I have a gift. I thought it's just, it's so fascinating. Why not? I have to learn this, right? And I would meet people and tell them something. Like, for example, um, I went I went out with my girlfriends during my normal life, and I was normal. And uh, one of them, she was talking about her current boyfriend and how much she wanted to marry him. And it was such a difficult conversation because they just broke up and then she said, but I want to be with him. And she was crying and I said, you don't have to worry, you will marry him this year, maybe like before summer, it was winter. And I said, it will happen very soon, so you don't have to worry about it. This breakup is nothing. You will come back stronger. And she looked at me and she said, are you a witch? And I'm like, no, 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 it's just like, it's obvious, I can see it in you, you know? And I think five and a half months later, uh, she got married to the guy. But for me, it was always probably like for you as well. When you see something like this and you just have this feeling and you just say it and for you, it's normal. You always think that everyone can tell this. That's why a lot of people who actually want to become a readers or practitioners, they never do become them because they always think that everyone can see that, everyone can do that. And that's our biggest mistake because the majority of people, they kind of blind when it comes to all of these things. I always had interesting encounters, like for example, I encountered gypsies when I was 16 and they were trying, you know how they, they scam you for money, like they say something, like they put you into a hypnotic state and then they ask for money or they say something will happen if you don't give us money. And they did it to me. And when the moment came when they said, now you have to give us money or something happened. And I said, no, it's, it's not true. I know it's a lie. I'm not going to give you money, you know? And then the woman who was doing this to me, the gypsy, she looked at me like straight into my eyes and she said, are you one of us? And I was like, no, of course not. What are you talking about? You know? And she, and then she said something like a few things like very fast, uh, with, without letting my hand go. The only few things that I remember that she said the black will become white and the white will become black and the moon will change the sun and few other things. And they made sense to me only probably, I would say 15, 13 years, years later when I was reading the book of Eliphaz Levy. That's probably the only book on Tuakal that I like and I still read it once a year. It's the dogma and rituals of high magic. I don't remember the official name, but this is something similar to that. So if you ask me about my book 
to go to, the to go to book, that would be the one. While reading this book, everything that the gypsy woman said came back to my mind and made sense because I kind of find the answers to what she was trying to tell me. This is another deck. This is from an interesting couple from Portugal. They are alchemists and they create decks and alchemy art. This is their website if you ever want to order from them. The deck is crazy, amazing, because it's actually connected to alchemy. And it's also one of a kind. And I'm confused how to open it. Okay, I opened it. This is how it looks like from the back. And I will show you the cards. As you see, very unusual, very beautiful. Uh, I do recommend this book because it's probably the most exciting deck I ever had. Um, because look at the art. It's just so, so crazy amazing. So when I realized that I have gifts, uh, probably when I was 27, when I lost everything in life, uh, a witch told me, she was like yelling at me that, because I was telling her that I'm probably gonna go study something else uh, because everything just fallen apart and I lost everything in life. And she was yelling, how many more mistakes you're gonna do before you actually realize that you're a witch? And it was so serious and it kind of stopped me in my track. And I still remember the impact of her words on me. And I still, for one year, I chose not to believe her and I chose to try to have normal life. And then at some point when again, I lost everything and I was like, fine, now I will try to be, to become a tarot reader, not to learn tarot. I just say to myself, I will become a tarot reader or else that's it. And I gave three months. I had this opportunity, the events that led to this were so crazy. So I had this opportunity for three months not to work and just learn tarot eight hours per day is my work. And after that, everything just took off. It was so magical, so crazy. I think the moment when you accept your path fully, that's when you, that's when you see real magic, how crazy it becomes. And how your life changes, how the universe actually guides you and takes care of you in the most unusual way. Of course, you have to make decisions that are crazy. You have to make the most difficult sacrifices. You have to go through the things that break you or make you, right? And probably some of you know what I'm talking about. And you ask me, how did your gift manifest that activation, meditation? No, I do not believe that gifts can just activate it if you sit and meditate. No, I do believe, but again, it's my path. It doesn't mean that for you it's different because I know for self alchemist, it just started when he, I think he just starts seeing sacred geometry, like interesting shapes. And after that, his life changed. Uh, for me, it was learning tarot that made me who I am. There's three months of going deep into the occult, of learning every sigil, every uh, number, every art. I was learning from two decks, from the uh, uh, Rider Whites and from Hermetic Tarot. On Hermetic Tarot, there is so much imagery, so many intricate details. So I went through all of them. Uh, I probably used two heavy notebooks, thick notebooks, and I learned everything. And those three months of learning were my initiation. I didn't meditate. I became different because I was into nature before I used to hate nature. But I, re I realized that just because the nature that was around me, it just wasn't the nature that I drawn to. Like for me, if I don't see palm trees around me, I just don't feel home. It's probably my past lives or I don't know what, but I like when it's hot, when it, when there is a sea, desert, palm trees, that's where I feel at home. If I don't have palm trees, like, <laughs> it's, it might be depression. I'm never depressed, I don't go into depressions, but this is when I'm depressed, <laughs> if I don't have uh, palm trees around me. 
And as you can see, this deck is insanely cool, right? The art is just beyond amazing. I'm gonna show you another deck. This deck I bought in the US, in New Orleans, uh, Santa Malerta Oracle. Because this this is Oracle. I don't really like Oracles, uh, but some of them just so interesting. Sometimes you have to just ask one simple question, right? You just have to pull one card and Oracles are the best for it. This is how the deck look like. And actually, if you put all cards together as a puzzle, it becomes a beautiful art. So it's very, very interesting. And I'm show you how the, how the decks look like. Also amazing, also very dark, unusual, and give you some kind of answers right away. You ask me what new skills are you learning? Uh, currently, I'm in a country that is uh, very connected to ancient Greece and um, ancient Greek magic and it's the land of witches. So I'm learning how to cast ancient spells. This is something new for me because I was uh, doing a lot of voodoo dolls, you know, voodoo. I learned uh, voodoo not too long ago and i've been into divination now i really into spells rituals hexes so this is what i learned because i feel again for me i learned from the practitioners i have to go to a practitioner and see what they do i learned this way better than read online or study a book on voodoo for example uh, it's like for me one of my gifts i think that was given to me is just to tell people what they are that's what i see i see a person uh, right away i can sense what they are their soul origin their gifts abilities so for me i'm a mirror to a person in front of me so when i sit in front of a witch and she casts an ancient spell i feel it i sense it and i remember it it's like it becomes part of me you know and it's way more powerful than read an old Cream more than actually to sit in front of her for 10-15 minutes. That's what I'm learning. Uh, also interesting question. What was once practice that is like ancient practice that is now lost? I think living the life in a way that it's magic, this is completely lost now because we are so into material world we do not feel connection with nature with the spirits of nature with the supernatural because it's always around us if we open our eyes even if you sit in a condo on you know 50th floor of a condo in a big city you are still surrounded by spirits because so many people died so many things happened so many demons angels pass by and ability to always be when when one foot in the supernatural and one foot in your uh, normal life and we lost it over the years it's either a normal person or a practitioner some practitioners they don't even even see anything no visions they don't they don't connect to spirits they just do something that is also empty because they they cannot see they cannot feel um, i was very fascinated by by shamans in panama by the tribes in panama uh, some of them, they're not even shamans. They don't consider themselves as shamans. They just think that they're, they're part of this tribe. But the things that they can still see, how they can control the ocean, the, you know, the, the wind, or talk to animals, they literally can stop any animal and just control them. Uh, I was working with a member of the tribe in Panama, and there was... Uh, stray dog, very scary, running toward us, uh, barking and probably <laughs> having not best intentions. And I was so scared. And he just literally, he just stood in front of the dog, um, moved his hand, his hand toward him. And he just started talking in his language, like, why are you like this? Where are you running? What happened? Tell me, uh, are you hungry? You know, and the dog, he just became so like quiet, like a puppy. And he just went to him and he started like, uh, like doing these weird noises, like he was trying to tell him what's wrong, 
you know, and when I asked him, how did he not got scared from this? And he's like, but why? You see clearly something happened to dog. It's not, he's just, he's not stupid, right? Uh, he doesn't want to hurt anyone. It's just, he needed to, he needed help, you know? And it's really, really made me think about the things that we do not understand only because we lose our connection to supernatural. I do believe in, in ancient times, People were more open to it. They were more attuned with with the universe, with nature, with deities. You know, in every city that I go to, the new ones, in the first three days, I always try to find the street of spirits. There is a specific street where spirits and ghosts, demons, angels, you name it, they walk like it's a parade every day. There is so much power that's happening in the street. So I always find an interesting intersection on the street where I do my ritual that that gives thanks to to the universe, to nature, to everything. To the spirits and these powers that made me to come to see the city. And you know, majority of the people don't see it. We walk through spirits every day, and we don't even understand that. Um, also, a lot of you people asking, uh, where do I live? I do not live anywhere. For the past um, probably five years, I've been traveling the world because I look for answers and I learn magic from people that I go to. And I've been to more than 30 countries in the past five years. It's kind of like gypsy lifestyle. So my altar is always traveling altar. And that's why I cannot sell any physical products because sometimes I'm in countries where there is no post or I don't have address. So I don't have a home. The whole universe is my home. Interesting card. Uh, probably I'm gonna answer one more question. Interesting question, actually. Someone is asking, I'm in a phase of life where I couldn't manage to make a decision properly. Why is that? Uh, why is that that you cannot make a decision? Why is that that you lost? Why is that that you feel stagnant? Why do you have void? Why do you have, uh, why do you feel unhappy even though on the paper everything is right, you know? Why you feel like you lost and you don't feel yourself and why when you do something, it's always taken away from you? It's a very simple answer. It is because, it is because you're doing something wrong, you're not being yourself and you don't even know what you need to do or what you want to do. For for people who watch occult supernatural things on YouTube, on TV, you know, if on Netflix you watch movies about witchcraft, for you guys, it means that you are unusual. There is something about you that is very magical. So the more you try to fit in, the more you try to live a normal life, the less happy you become. It means there are always going to be a moment, moment of your life when you feel that you cannot do this anymore. So you either go into a cult, become who you are, or you just become miserable for the rest of your life. So this is why. This is why you don't know how to make any decision because it doesn't even matter what kind of decision you take. It's probably going to be wrong because you're not asking the right question or the decision is not important. And... Maybe subconsciously you feel that the decision is, doesn't matter because nothing going to change. If you change your job, nothing going to change. If you go to another country, nothing is going to change because it's not about changing the circumstances. It's about changing yourself. So I guess this is the last question. I'm still going to go uh, over other questions that I have there because there's so many beautiful, crazy, amazing questions that I want to talk about and address. Let me know if you like this type of videos and I will definitely show you more my tarot cards in the future. So enjoy the rest of your day or your evening or your morning and I'll see you in the next video.